Hey, welcome to another episode of the Typewriter Video Series. This is Joe Van Cleve. And this episode, I'm going to talk about um, a recent acquisition of another typewriter. Now, if you're a friend or family of mine, you would know that I do not need another typewriter in my life. So, uh, I've been avoiding going to thrift stores and antique stores on purpose just to keep myself from temptation. And I don't very often at all even look at the local Craigslist. However, I, uh, last Sunday I went on to Craigslist and I found a 1937 Corona Standard in heirloom condition and I ended up getting it. And I'm extremely happy about it and extremely thrilled about it. The condition of the machine is more than I could have hoped for. It's just a gorgeous machine, which you'll see here shortly. But I wanted to discuss uh, something about uh, what it means to be a collector when you find yourself with 14 typewriters in your house. And you might have to decide to prioritize your collection. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. Hey, I just wanted to point out that this is episode 25 of the typewriter video series. The, is there some kind of a silver anniversary for 25? I don't know. Well, so I'm uh, sitting here in a parking lot and I've arranged to meet up with a guy that's selling a 1940s era Corona standard flat top typewriter. It's been in his family since the 1940s, so I'm anxious to meet up with him and see if I can buy it. Well, I finished meeting up with the guy from Craigslist, and look at what we have here. We have ourselves a late 1930s, maybe early, early 1940s, Corona Standard flat top typewriter. Woohoo! It's family heirloom. It's been in this guy's family since the 19, late 1930s, early 1940s. He lived in upstate New York. I'm going to bring this thing home and service it and clean it up. Now let's recap. If you haven't been keeping track over the last few years of my blog, let's recap my collection. This is the latest count. I have two Olivetti Lettera 22s. One is an American style keyboard, one is a British keyboard. I have one Olivetti Lettera, um, actually Olivetti Underwood Model 21. It's a bigger machine. I have the late 1920s Corona 4. I have an Underwood Universal from 1936. I have a Webster XL747 made by Brother. I have a Royal Mercury, a little portable that I call my beach typer. I have two Hermes 3000 uh, typewriters, the 1970s boxy plastic style. One of them is now the Naked Rider. I have uh, a Smith Corona Silent. I have a Smith Corona Galaxy 12. I have a Smith Corona Coronet Automatic 12 Electrified Manual. And I have a Hermes Rocket from 1953. And of course, the latest acquisition, the Smith Corona Standard from 1937. So I'm going to have to decide which of these to keep and which to get rid of. I'm thinking I need to get rid of a handful of these machines. And by get rid of, I mean I'm going to have to put them on the local Craigslist and or maybe rent a booth at a local uh, antique store and try to sell them that way. I really don't want to sell them online and ship them because just the shipping costs and the risk of that is too great. But let's go and look at this collection and see if I can figure out which, I want, which ones I want to save and, one and, and ones I want to keep, but first let's look at this new Smith Corona Standard. Well, here is the machine. This is a 1937 Corona Standard flat top typewriter. And I would say it is in heirloom condition. Um, the rubber platen is really good shape. The um, feed rollers, even the feet underneath the machine are 
oh just about like new these keys look at these keys they're beautiful the uh, placards on them look like brand new the glass tops are just brand new the paint shines and the thing types like you wouldn't believe the, the touch on it is so good I can truly touch type on this machine uh, even the troublesome letter A key that I my little pinky of my left hand that always doesn't hit it as strong as it should it seems like I can just type so well on this and look at the floating shift keys uh, what a nice machine beautiful machine and um, the gold uh, lettering the decals really good shape so the story on this machine was the gentleman I bought it from is roughly my age probably in his early 60s his dad purchased it in 1938 in upstate New York when he went to college and then this gentleman uh, used it in the 70s when he went to college and the last time this machine was used was 1980 and it had been sitting in the case in the closet for 35 years 36 years so uh, I'm just thrilled about this machine and uh, I definitely because of the quality of it and the, the looks of it and the fact that it types so wonderfully great is definitely a keeper in my book so that's one of the reasons why I'm going to have to decide to get rid of uh, some machines in my collection to make room for this one. So I had to today uh, think about developing what I call a hit list. This is a list of typewriters that I'm going to have to consider to get rid of. Now keep in mind that all of these machines I've liked. I've collected them and I've kept them for a reason. However, as you might know if you're a typewriter collector, not every machine is perfect or doesn't satisfy you in the way you hoped it would. And so this is kind of some of the criteria I'm using for whether or not I should get rid of it. So let's talk about these machines and I'll just start with the oldest one, the Smith Corona 4. Now I've spent a few hundred dollars on it. I must have bought it for $70 or more at an antique store in Santa Fe. And I paid, oh, well over $100 to get it serviced and have the platen replaced and all that. Um, and it's a pretty machine because it's old, but really it doesn't type all that well. The letters, the vertical alignment of the letters is off. That can't really practically be corrected um, without having the, the jig for resoldering the type slugs, and I don't want to spend any more money on it. So in spite of the fact that it's an old machine and it's a pretty machine, the fact is this new Corona standard is prettier. But I think I could get some good money from the Corona 4, so that's on the hit list. The next one is, um, I have two Olivetti Letter 22s. Um, I think the one with the British keyboard, it, even though the touch on it is better than the American one, I think the, the letters have a variability in their vertical position. If you type the same letter over and over, it won't be consistent. And I think the reason why is because there's play in the slots of the segment for the type bar arms, and it causes them to vary as they, as they type. And because of that, I think I'm going to get rid of the British keyboard Olivetti Letter of 22, and it's, they're fairly uh, well-respected in the market, so I should be able to get some decent money for it. That'll still leave me with one Olivetti Letter of which was given to me by a friend, by the way, so another good reason. Now, the, the uh, Underwood Olivetti 21, the large middle size one, um, I got that at a local uh, thrift store. There's an interesting backstory to it about the, the guy that owned it, uh, drove a motorcycle out to New Mexico in the late 1960s, traded his motorcycle for the typewriter. There's an original receipt in there that kind of correlates that uh, story, but I don't use it that often. It's a big machine, it's kind of nice, but I just don't use it very much. So I think I can get some decent money for it. Um, the Underwood Universal, I bought it uh, reconditioned from a local typewriter shop. It's a 1936, it's a crinkle paint black machine. It types pretty good, but it's not as good as this Smith Corona standard. And if I have to get rid of some typewriters, this one I think will sell pretty nicely. It's in great shape. And then, um, the Smith Corona Galaxy 12, it's a blue two-tone, big 10-inch wide carriage uh, machine. It types pretty good, uh, but it's big, and to be honest with you, the Smith Corona Silent types better, and it's smaller. So I think the Galaxy 12 is going to go. 
So now, what does this leave as far as typewriters left in my collection if I do get rid of these? Well, first of all, you have the Letter of 22, the American Keyboard one that was a friend of my, it was uh, uh, given to me by a friend. Um, so that's kind of a keeper. It's nice to have one Letter of 22 in your collection. The little Webster XL 747 uh, made by Brother, it's a bright blue typewriter. The keys are a bit heavy and it's a carriage shift, but you know, it's small, portable, the case is really nice, it has the uh, automatic repeat space feature, and it's really a satisfying lap typer, and it's really portable, and it's uh, it satisfies me, even though it's not perfect, and uh, that's the good reason to keep it, right, if it satisfies you. Uh, the Royal Mercury is a little made in Japan uh, portable. I've, I've taken it out to the beach in California several times. It's my beach typer. It types great. It's a great machine. It's a keeper. Um, the Hermes 3000. Uh, to both of them. One of them is technically my grandson, so I'm going to keep it. The other one is now the Naked Rider. I'm going to have to keep that. They're both great typing machines. Got to keep them. The Smith Corona Silent. It's a brown and dark green, kind of um, not colorful, but great ergonomics, great touch, great typing. And uh, from the 1950s, it's a keeper. Especially getting rid of the Galaxy 12, right? I can, I'll still have this Smith Corona from the 1950s. Then the Smith Corona Coronet Automatic 12, the electrified manual. It's kind of grungy, dirty. Um, I haven't done too much work to it, but it's the only electric in my collection, and it's a hybrid electric. It uses standard cloth ribbons. I think I'm going to keep it because uh, it's electric. It's the only one I have, and it really is a good workhorse typing machine for writing. I can always choose, you know, to get rid of the, that one later if I do, but I think for now I'll keep it. And then the Hermes Rocket. What can you say? It's a Hermes Rocket. This one types really good. I had a good experience with it last autumn of 2015 on, the, on my long trip. It doesn't take up much room. It's a keeper, and it was also given to me by a friend, and it has a special backstory. And, of course, the queen bee of the collection, as you just saw, the Smith Corona Standard is definitely a keeper. So, out of 14 machines, I'm planning on getting rid of five, and that leaves me with nine machines. At least it's single digits. And hopefully I can contain my, uh, my desire to collect more of them and only get repeat uh, new machines in the collection when there's something that's better than what I have already. I think one of the lessons from this uh, period of time when I've been reassessing my collection has to do with the purpose of typewriters in a person's life. I don't collect typewriters for historical reasons as much as I collect them to use them and appreciate them as mechanical objects. Um, they're to be used, not to sit in shelves to be looked at. So. I have to reassess my needs as a writer. I think typewriters are great as first draft machines and I think since the internet became readily available to computers it has also become a distraction to the writing process. Typewriters have now become one of the alternative means of reducing distractions in the, in the first draft. And with a typewritten sheet, you can scan it and use optical character recognition software and you can get a text file out of it. So it is part of a digital workflow. So there is a valid place for mechanical typewriters in this age of internet connected uh, word processing platforms. So that's some consideration about where typewriters are at in my life. Um, so it's just a matter of kind of self-control and having a balance in your life with things. So this is Joe Van Cleve with another episode of the Typewriter video series and as always you have yourself a great day. Oh one more thing. Remember how I said I had 14 typewriters and I was going to get rid of five? Well you know you have a collecting problem when you forgot the 15th typewriter, which is in this old Hartman Skymate suitcase, and it is a wide carriage Olympia SM9, and it is a great typewriter. And to be honest with you, I don't know whether I'm going to keep it or sell it. <laughs>